Namaste. Namaste everyone. We will just uh, wait for a minute or so. Let uh, people come in. Let's say Saturday and you know, it's a little bit early in the morning. So remember that uh, your video and your microphones, they are turned off until you know the, the speaker is finished with the talk. And please, uh, please go to chat and then you know you can ask your questions there. You can also see messages there. So keep an eye on the chat, please. Thank you. <clears throat> so namaste everyone and welcome everyone. My name is uh, Lalit Jairat and uh, I work at University of Guam for, for over 20 years now. And uh, I have been teaching yoga there for over 10 years. So today is our fifth speaker that is going to share their wisdom with us on University of Guam's Yoga Speaker Series 2021. This series is hosted by University of Guelph's Yoga and Meditation Collective that has been practicing classical yoga and meditation for over 10 years now. And all are welcome for this collective, you know, staff, faculty, students, visitors, alumni, retiree, all are welcome in this uh, collective. So before we start our events today, the main event, uh, we will do a little conditioning there, okay? So conditioning, why we do the conditioning? Because we want to focus ourselves, we want to concentrate ourselves here, you know? So that was one of the things that we asked you to bring your mat. So if you have brought your mat, please sit down on the floor, okay? And if you cannot sit on the chair, or if you want to lie down, that's fine too. So what we're gonna do is, we are going to make sure that our alignment is good. So we are to, going to expand our sternum, okay? We are going to expand our chest at the sternum. And make sure that your neck and head, they are aligned. Okay, you can bring your palms to your heart center or you can bring them over your knees. Make sure that your spine is straight. Your head and neck, they're all in one line. The natural shape. So now what we are going to do is we are going to to gently cover our up. Uh, close our eyes, okay? So your eyelids gently covering your eyes. Your eyes are clear, calm, kind, gentle, compassionate, loving. And you can bring the focus or attention to your third eye, the area between your third eye. So we do the conditioning to bring focus to the task at our head. So your focus is on the third eye. And now watch your breath. Watch the flow of your breath. Feel the breath at the nostrils. You can also follow the path of the breath when you breathe in, when you, when you breathe out. So bringing the mind to focus somewhere out, the mind is somewhere out, usually we are bringing it inside. Keep following your breath. So 
So this conditioning is one of the tool or technique that is devised by the Yoga Institute Mumbai, where we want to even our mind, we want to make even our breath, our emotions, and our feelings. So that is a one kind of union in yoga. Yoga means union, joining the mind, the breath, and the body. Just one or two minutes, couple of minutes, let's do that. Calm ourselves down. You can keep your eyes closed throughout this event and just absorb whatever is said the Hansaji's wisdom, Ma Hansaji, our revered Ma. Can go deep inside. When I'm saying going deep inside, we are bringing all our senses inside. So this is a beautiful thing that we are doing, conscious breathing. And we are doing this conscious breathing in a group. So we are doing a social yoga here. If you have been in the first event with the social yoga, social transformation is possible. So now you can keep your eyes closed or you can open, you can bring your palms over your knees and now we have a welcome message from uh, Indra Naidu Harris. She is the Associate Vice President of Diversity and Human Rights at the University of Guelph. So she's going to welcome our speaker, Ma Hansaji Yogendra, Dr. Hansaji Yogendra, and she will also do the land acknowledgement that is very important part of this event. Good morning, everyone. Namaste and welcome. Welcome to the 2021 Yoga Speaker Series. I'm Indira Naidu Harris, the Associate Vice President of Diversity and Human Rights at the University of Guelph. I'd like to start by saying thank you. Thank you to Lalit Jairath and the U of G Yoga and Meditation Collective for organizing this important series and for inviting Dr. Hansa Yogendra, the first lady yoga guru to the University of Guelph. I know this is going to be an absolutely amazing event, but before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge the land. Now I know we are all in different places right now, but we all have a special connection to the city of Guelph and the lands on which the University of Guelph resides. The U of G is located on the treaty lands and territory of many indigenous peoples dating back countless generations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe peoples. We recognize that this gathering place is home to many First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples, and acknowledging them reminds us of our collective responsibility to the land where we learn, live, work and play. You know, these are difficult times. We've been practicing physical distancing and working remotely for more than a year, and our lives and daily routines have changed dramatically. The reality is that we've all had to be creative, a cup of coffee or a Zoom with a friend, a drive-by birthday parade, or even a virtual Sunday morning yoga practice. 
no question, our lives have changed over the past year. Life is tough right now, and dealing with the daily harsh realities of a global pandemic takes its toll on our minds, bodies, and spirits. So being able to take a few minutes a day to free ourselves of the daily challenges and stresses of our complicated lives, to breathe deeply and cleanse our minds and our bodies is a gift, a gift we give ourselves. That's what yoga is a special moment in time we give ourselves so we can reconnect, rejuvenate, and ground ourselves. And as you all know, yoga gives back. Practicing yoga gives back to us in a deeply energizing way. It has a tremendous impact on our mental and physical well-being during these very tough times. Being able to take a deep breath and look inwards and slowly, methodically take stock of our lives and how we're feeling, how we're doing, is freeing and healing and ultimately keeps us all well. And so practicing yoga is really about joining and uniting our bodies with our consciousness, bringing all the various parts of ourselves together so we can be whole. And today, as we all gather virtually for this morning's event, yoga is also bringing us together in another way. It's allowing us to reflect and think about the unity and deep bonds we have in our U of G community, even during these challenging times. Because after a year of physically distancing, our connections and our relationships with ourselves and each other have deepened and strengthened. We've weathered the storm together and we'll hopefully be able to gather in the sunshine for our practice sometime in the future. Now, I am so pleased to welcome our special guest this morning, Dr. Hansa Yogendra to the University of Guelph. Dr. Hansa Yogendra is a dynamo. She is a yoga guru, author, researcher, counselor, and TV personality. She is also the director of the Yoga Institute in Mumbai, the oldest organized yoga center in the world. Just imagine that. And Dr. Hansa is the leading face of householder yoga. She has conducted over 100,000 theoretical and practice sessions of yoga to date, an absolutely amazing accomplishment. As president of the International Board of Yoga, chair of the Yoga Certification Committee for Quality Council of India, and senior vice president of the India, Indian Yoga Association, Dr. Hansaji has made significant contributions in advancing yoga education, research, experiential learning, and standardization of yoga practices. She is also the recipient of the Bharat Gaurav Award, or Pride of India Award for extraordinary contributions and excellence in the field of yoga. So grab a spot on your mat now, everyone, and join me in giving Dr. Hansa G. Yogendra a warm welcome to the University of Guelph. Let's take a moment to reflect. Namaste. So today I'm not gonna talk very much, okay? I've been talking a lot. And uh, we have uh, Mahansaji, our revered mother. Uh, we call her lovingly uh, Mahansaji. So Mahansaji, I welcome you. And uh, uh, we are just waiting to hear your uh, words of the wisdom. Thank you. So Mahansaji, you can start now. Yes. You see, see, see this situation today itself. A city like Mumbai, always lights are on. But right now, the, all, all these all lights the went off. So we went to another building and we again tried and tried and somehow we got it. But this is life. What is life? When I ask the question, people always say that life is between B and D. Between birth and death is life. But I always say that there is C in between, choice. Situations are never in our hands. But how to deal with situation is very much in our hand. Now, sudden situation here, outside world is never in our control. But you can get panicked, you can get upset, you can abuse this and that person. Or you have a choice to be quiet 
and just try and try again till you succeed. So life is like this. We have to understand that what is external world is not in our hand. We are just born in the life. We are born. We are not even asked whether we would like to be born or not. And we are here. Now, automatically, this is my mother, this is my father, uncle, aunt, brother, sister. Everything is fixed. There is no choice there either. I'm in a particular country. I'm in a particular family who is following certain patterns. I have my own body, its color, shape, size. Everything is fixed. No choice. Where is the choice? So now the problem is this, that unless person understands, person is going to suffer. If person doesn't accept himself as he or she is, that person is going to suffer. So in yoga, we say that first of all, know yourself thoroughly well. Every human is different. Looking at others, living your life would not be correct. My body is different. My mind is different. First of all, understand that what are we? I have my body. I have my body. And I have to take care of my body. I am not the body. But I have my body. I have to see that my body is strong. My body is disease free. My body can do its duty thoroughly well in life without any exhaustion or without any negativity or tension. So I have to take care of my body. I have my mind. <clears throat> Again, I have to see that my mind is mine and my mind should be kept properly by me. I should see that my mind has positive thoughts. I should see that my mind is, has zest and enthusiasm and joy. That is my responsibility. I should see what type of mind I have. When certain situations are chaotic, how my mind functions, when things are very good, how my mind functions. When I'm alone, what type of thoughts come to me? When I'm with people around, what type of thoughts come to me? I should know my mind thoroughly well. Then who is this I? This I is nothing else but consciousness. Consciousness, which is named by many names. It is soul, atma, chaitanyata, consciousness and to reach to consciousness, awareness. So this is what I am. Now, every human has their own body, mind and soul. Every human. What is good for me may not be good for others. What I feel is wonderful for somebody, it is not at all wonderful, it is absolutely rubbish. Now what will happen? When I'm doing something very nicely and somebody says it is not at all correct, I may get hurt that how he's talking like that. But then we should know very well that that person is different and you are different. You should not get affected by somebody in life. They have all the right to think in their way. They can't think in your way. You want everybody to behave nicely. You want everybody to be just. You want everybody to be sincere. But it doesn't happen like that. In humans, all varieties are there. I always say that every human is a sample by itself, variety. And every variety is beautiful. It's, it has its own body, mind and soul. And we have to accept every variety as it is. Rather, that soul part which is there in us, we should know that we have all the quality of divine. Everybody is potentially divine. And so keeping that in mind, we should understand that everybody is justified for his behavior and we should not reject or react any situations in life. So see life from this point of view, what we call as spirituality. It is a certain way of thinking. When I'm born, every child when he's born, that child is being looked after looked after by nature, by so many people. The child is born, mother has a milk in her breast from where it has come. It has come for child. There is air, water, sun, fire, everything is available for a child. So many things, when you grow, you want a bread or you want fruits or you want vegetables from where it comes. 
somebody is growing somewhere vegetables or fruits or wheat somebody is cultivating somebody is packaging somebody is transporting all this transport system and everything is road buses trains planes all these are available so from somewhere the things come here where you live somebody is doing trading so you go and buy and then you get wheat flour and then you make a dough out of it and you make a bread or chapati out of it so for one chapati or one loaf of bread how many people have worked how many people are contributing their time and energy and sweat and everything for me i am benefiting from that so understand this that for my life for my survival so many people are contributing i should also do my part into this world this thinking has to be clear that i am not going to live just for myself as animals live animals live for themselves they also have their children they children grow they give them also basic understanding and that that part of an animal does but humans are supposed to live for others and here comes the concept of dharma dharma word is used dharma means in yoga responsibility duty dharma has nothing to do with religion the moment humans have started thinking dharma started responsibility thinking started as long as if humans were living like animals when you are hungry then you something and eat when you are thirsty go near water and drink there was no yoga <coughs> but when you start thinking that well by 12 12 30 i will get hungry so let me keep food be ready before i get hungry here comes our intelligence here comes the capacity of human who can think who can foresee the problems be prepared for the problems who can plan the life the civilization started human started growing things around they started having water and all the other facilities around their house they made house for themselves for their protection <coughs> so all that started and yoga started i always say that when you think before action you are doing yoga and you are doing your action pertaining to dharma and you do it is that you are following the first step and that is doing your dharma your dharma means doing your responsibility towards other responsibilities duty this is the word for dharma in yoga religions have come much later on religion has nothing to do with yoga yoga is talking about how human should live his life every human should learn yoga every human should know that when he is born what are the things he is supposed to do so the first work for human is supposed to do is doing his dharma doing his following his responsibility see understanding what are his duties and doing the work accordingly second you every human should not be dependent on other human every human should be self reliant in nature and so here comes the place of earth money and so you should start understanding that person has to learn how to manage his own life food shelter water and all these things what is required for his livelihood he should earn money for that spending time to earn money that is second work which he is supposed to do in 24 hours what are the activities you are supposed to do i am giving you the list so first is activity pertaining to dharma your responsibility duty we'll go little bit later on the details second is artha earning your own livelihood and uh, not depending on others and uh, begging or for to others third is calm learning to channelize your emotion as far as dharma and kartha is concerned emotions don't have much place there i 
have to go to work even if I don't like. I'll have to go. Or I'll have to accept that this type of brother is my brother or this type of mother is my mother. I have no choice there. There is no likes, dislikes coming into dharma and artha. Emotions are not tackled at all in dharma and artha. You like or don't like, you have to do, means you will be doing it. Since it's your duty, you will be doing it. Since you have to go to work, you will be going. So for emotions, as we are structured of two things, our mind has two things. One is intellect and another is emotion. We use our intellect, buddhi, what we say is, what is right, what is wrong, that discriminative power we have. And so we should always use the intellect and understand whether the work, what I'm doing is pertaining to dharma or not, or a dharma wrong action or a right action. Am I doing a right action or not? That I should find out and that I should do. But as far as emotions are concerned, what do I do? Now, emotions we have to be very much aware about. We should know that we are bundle of emotions. But emotions could be positive or they could be negative. Emotions could be any. So we, we have to understand that if we have positive emotions, like faith, peace, enthusiasm, like having complete confidence in doing things in life, love, care, compassion, all these are positive emotions. And negative emotions could be anger, hatred, jealousy, anxiety, tension, worry, and all these are negative emotions. So it is totally my choice to see that which emotion I am dealing with. Somebody behaves rudely. I have a choice to get hurt or not to get hurt. Why should I make my emotions negative? Because of somebody. Somebody is doing his job. It's his body, his mind, his management. I should do my job. I should not get affected by anybody in life. That's yoga. That's how I should manage my life and not puppet in hands of others that anybody can make me cry, anybody can make me upset, anybody can cheat me, anybody can do anything. No, I should live my life in a way that I am full of enthusiasm, full of energy. I should be alert and agile when I'm dealing with any other human beings because human beings are such animals because biologically we are animals. Human beings are such whose mind is continuously distracted unless that human has trained his mind. Mind is continuously distracted, fluctuating. Material world is continuously changing. His matter, mind is a matter, body is a matter. It's continuously changing. Today, some human loves you. After a few years, he may not love you. He may hate you. Today, some somebody cooperates with you. After a few, he will not cooperate, rather create more problem for you. This is human. So we are supposed to understand how to deal with ups and downs of life and how, to, how not to get toppled down by anybody's behavior. We should maintain our own balance. So this is the emotional management and for emotional management, we should do something. Now, right now in the beginning, you sat and sat quietly and conditioned yourself. Now this itself is a very good thing to bring your troubled emotions into a normal self, into a balanced state. You should try and understand that we are supposed to deal with awareness that how I can add more and more positivity to my mind, to my emotions. So all such activities like listening to music, like dancing, like uh, you know, reading some very good thing and thinking and writing about it. And all these hobbies like playing games and pottery and nature trail and being with gardening and cooking. And any of these things should very much be in our day. So in a day, at least spend half an hour to one hour or one and a half hour on these activities, which would really bring positivity in our mind. And to bring that, we should spend some time in that fashion. So that is called as karma, emotional channelization. And fourth type of activity which person should do is activity pertaining to moksha. And that is 
selfless work, number one, and for self-development doing some work. So here comes a place of meditation, it's good pranayam, all this technology part of yoga also works wonder. And learning to be more loving, caring, compassionate, because whole world is your family. So try and do whatever you can do for the family, for others, everybody. So when we talk about dharma, we should know that first dharma is dharma towards your own self. Maintaining your own balance all the time. Seeing that your energy level is up to date. So you are eating properly, you are sleeping properly. You are managing your life day in a way that you have full of energy. And second would be uh, duty towards near and dear with whom you are living. Third, duty towards work, all those people who are helping you in work. Fourth, duty towards society where you are living with people around and all your friends and other people. Fifth, duty towards nation and sixth, duty towards humanity. All this comes under the group of dharma. We should be living life with dharma and we should be focusing on moksha, that is the fourth step, and artha and kam, money as well as emotional channelization could be in between as much as you need accordingly. So these are called as purusharthas in yoga, which are these four steps, dharma, artha, kama, moksha. And this is a very good guideline given by Vedas. And here in Veda, they have mentioned this. And every human is supposed to do this. So now, with this, since we are, time has gone a little bit out of our control. Now, this is a little background I have given you. Now, if you can have any questions or you want to ask anything, because yoga has a very vast subject. Yoga deals with body. So it takes care of body, human body. It takes care of mind, how to deal with human mind. It takes care of emotion. It takes care of interpersonal relationship, how to deal with the nonsense of the world or good that world and so on. Uh, in, in case of interpersonal and definitely spiritual. So all this, these are the dimensions in yoga, social, spiritual. So now if you have any question, even diseases, sickness, yoga has lots to give to humanity. You, and yoga has these three subjects psychology, philosophy, <laughs> and technology. Technology is popular. Asans, pranayams, meditations, kriyas, mandal, mudra. But human psychology, how to think, how usually we think, and how we are supposed to think. And philosophy, what should be the purpose and goal? When whatever action you do, keep the purpose behind and then do the action. So with all this background, now, I would want you to come up with some questions which we will go ahead with. Yes, Mr. Lalit Jairat. Uh, yeah, Namaste. Uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, words of wisdom and uh, also how to live our life successfully. You know. So I open the floor to participants. You know, if you have a question, you can put them in the chat or you can raise your hand and then you can read the question and then uh, Mahan Saji will answer it. You know. uh, Mahan Saji, uh, I always uh, wonder about, you know, uh, the Yoga Institute is, you know, like over 100 years old, you know. What yes. Are the, what are the qualities there, you know, that it has, you know, survived so long, you know, because, you know, uh -huh words come and go, you know. And yes. I wonder about, you know, the, I remember that, uh, uh, yes, Dr. Jayadeji, they always used to say, you know, yoga is an education, okay? You have yes. to uh, work uh, yes. in the yes. education yes. and also research, you know, I say that. Yes. yes. So yes. research, you know. So please, uh, if you can enlighten us on that. Yes, yes. First of all, you should know that Yoga Institute is teaching yoga for householders. Those who don't have much time, they have duty towards others in life. What I was trying to tell you, they are doing their dharma, kartavya, responsibility. 
such people how they should keep themselves body mind emotions useful how they should be useful to society and nation uh, that's what yoga institute is teaching since last 102 years we are now moving ahead the founder of the institute shri yogendra ji lived for 93 years mother of the institute founder's wife lived for 97 years then dr jaydev my husband who also lived for 90 years just passed 2 years back 3 years back and now i am here and 73 74 year old so yoga institute and then our son and so many students more than 50000 students all over the world teaching yoga but this yoga which deals with body mind emotions intellect and so on so your institute has done lots of research work and very very interesting research work because we have a very long history and here certain researches are so interesting we have done it but the recent research i would quote would be research on heart patients and second would be um the research you say what you want to say they have written some questions we need to ask them but then we will ask and i will answer no so second would be to uh, to see that uh, we have done research on education for heart we know that bypass surgery can be bypassed and you don't need bypass surgery the blockage is go away enlargement of heart becomes normal and uh, life becomes much better much useful uh, we have done good amount of work there when we talk about heart or diabetes or asthma we just don't teach patient only we we teach the whole family because we are after all social animal if my heart is okay but my son is taking drugs i would definitely get affected or uh, anything else so the whole family we try to educate and that works wonders they are all fit and fine and everything is good so similarly we have done research on various diseases diabetes asthma orthopedic problems depression uh, schizophrenia all such and then anxiety tension and here be children who have to appear for some exams competitive exam the tension of their parents which is very strong here we have done research on them and we have found out that once they understand their role, role their duty their responsibility and uh, they learn to see things objectively in life they improve very fast and child also does very well in their exam similarly right now we are doing research on the students who are taking classes online this is a new thing altogether we are using computer now for education what is the stress level of them theirs because of online education and second the health care online also we are doing where we are taking all the parameters of theirs the 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 height their weight their the grip the strength the flexibility of their spine and so on and uh, um, we are seeing that if weight reduces strength should increase vital capacity of lung should increase so accordingly we teach them uh, techniques and uh, they are really benefited so all this is done online in the yoga institute and we are in to do many other research if person is under tension what type of meditation he should do or when person is having anxiety what type of meditation or when person is angry what type of meditation or when person is very depressive what type so we have come out with we have this is it is coming on the process we we'll open up the app on the process where we will come up with absolutely direct um, technique to help them out so that's all uh, i can tell a lot yeah. of these are one touch one so do i read the yeah i will i will have yeah, another question for you mahan sir ji i have another question for you this is from shilpa and her question is yeah to deal with how to deal with compulsions even when you know how, not good for yourself how to deal with compulsions yes you know that they are not good for yourself but you know you cannot help them well in life nothing comes with a 
giving you a signal that look i am coming life is nothing else but full of uncertainty next moment we don't know what is going to happen now these situations are compulsory situations where we have to um, deal with them when it comes to human to human compulsion somebody is compulsive compulsive on you first person has to do his duty by seeing things little objectively we call vairagya bring little vairagya don't get affected like i give an example a man is drinking every day in the house and wife doesn't want that man should drink because children are learning what every day drinking so she is continuously fighting with him it's a very compulsive situation he forces her also that she should also sit and drink but then she decides to do her duty dharma and she decides that she and her children would create a very positive atmosphere in the house right now atmosphere of the house is so negative and violent so she does all those activities which we tell some yoga games some yoga activities learning to dance playing together playing carrom table tennis cards and laughing cracking jokes with each other so at least spending one and a half hour doing all these things and that person who is drinking is watching and he also starts taking interest in those things and finally that compulsive situation goes away he leaves it so we have to keep a patience and we have to slowly go on doing whatever we can do but with a good positive state of mind nothing should disturb you if you are worrying and getting helpless helpless and hopeless situation can always bring cancer never do that no situation is a hopeless situation you can all there is always a scope for change and improvement so with this thinking i am sure situation would be different yeah another question do i read the question they are there in front of me okay go ahead monik thank you you read it thank you for your uh, thank you for your explanation more so more so thank you for your explanation of a way of conceptualizing and disambiguating the use of word sign karma and linking that to a set of social relations prior to religion in the sense of an institutionalized ideology i had uh, not, not thought of it that way before could you link this to ideas like uh, patriarchy and feminist liberation from extreme versions of chauvinist patriarchy thank you very much ahimsa ji this is from becker. hans becker well patriarch any of these thoughts our person can think and develop in mind but understand one point thoroughly well that it has to go slow and gradual our body also is structured in such a way you want to climb the highest peak of the mountain you have to train your body every day little 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 to climb and then slowly once you decide that you are fit enough then you start climbing so you have to train your body you have to train your mind suddenly having some strong idea in mind and negating all other things will not be right first tolerate all the different ideas but you carry on with your to everybody but do your thing i always give a story of president roosevelt that when he got elected when he came on the first day in his office roosevelt was sitting with his wife wife was sitting with roosevelt and his opposition party came people came and started giving him lots of inputs that now you are president you should follow certain certain things then president was listening very carefully say how right you are how correct you are very good very good thank you another side his own party people came after those people went away they had another idea telling and president was listening to them and saying how right how correct you are how wonderful thank you etc etc his wife was sitting there he said what type of man you are 
to those people you said how, how right how intelligent to these people also said you how right intelligent they both were talking certain things quite opposite to each other what is this going on so president looked at his wife and said madam you are also very right so the point is everybody is right and you have your own idea fine but do what you think go ahead very silently very peacefully without getting affected by people's different opinions and that would be very nice yeah okay i'll i'll uh, i will say one question okay so this is the one that i was i started this is from monique she's asking there seems to be many people at least in the west that believe that if they have a mental health issue or have been diagnosed with a mental health issue that perhaps they don't have the ability to gain control of their minds mental health experts have told them that they have an illness and will need intense therapy and perhaps medication to overcome their troubles that it is not their fault and that it is a chemical imbalance how do you yes. help someone who does not believe they can gain control over their mind what would yes. we start with to help them gain control okay. understand one thing that medical field have their own opinion their own way of looking at it and they should be doing their part when person is into severe depression or severe anxiety state uh, he can't come even to the yoga center to learn he is not in that capacity so definitely he needs some medicines to see that the, the chemicals the chemistry of his brain is functioning better but that doesn't solve the problem no medicine can solve the problem medicine can help you just to manage your life solving problem person has to do himself so and yoga yoga part so i have we have many such cases right from severe depression to schizophrenia or to uh, the suicidal tendencies to to um, maniac behavior many such things where medicine and yoga combination takes that person out of the whole thing i have noticed that there are some cases where medicines are not required later on but there are some cases when medicine is required but then it would be a very minimum dose which they can carry on with that minimum dose and yoga way of life and they are they really live a very healthy and normal life with proper family children and everything they do their job very well they are good human beings so it is a combination so don't hate medicine and don't be totally dependent on medicine person has to take charge of himself and he should learn yoga technology yoga philosophy and psychology thoroughly and that would really help okay hey, the next question is from uh, praveen saxena so he is asking truly amazing lecture question how to define intellect is it separate from mind thanks yes you see mind is something which is where is the mind mind is everywhere mind is that intelligence every cell has its own intelligence in our body and so mind is a coordinator if i want to see my mind will be there with my eye and then only i can see otherwise i can't see my mind is somewhere else even my eyes are open i don't see or i can't hear mind is somewhere else so understand this mind now intellect is something which is a capacity to think discriminate discrimination power to see or not to see first intellect has to decide that i want to see then mind will go there and then your eyes will see so that intellect has to take a decision we have which is called as i sense i want to do and so we have that we have what is called as buddhi or mahat in yoga proper technology part in yoga is mahat so try and see that we use our thinking discriminative power before we decide to do any action we have that capacity and we can do that rather our discriminative power is so strong so much there in our mind in our personality that uh, person automatically naturally does his duty dharma and naturally by doing his duty he gains more and more knowledge automatically even if you don't like to learn you will learn you are 
burning finger in your uh, fire next time you will be careful automatically you have learned that fire is burning so you will not you have learned you have progressed so this is how we all progress and it's a natural phenomenon and then more and more knowledge you become more and more detached you bring vairagya in your personality automatically it comes you are not so affected by little little things somebody vomited okay vomit is fine good toxins have removed you don't get panicked about it so somebody has lost motion or somebody has a fever you have what is called as aishwarya confidence now capacity now and so it is like dharma gyan of vairagya aishwarya they just follow one after another and that is our intellect capacity <coughs> which is mentioned in our sankhya philosophy and very nicely so we should use that capacity we have that capacity Yeah. The next question is uh, from Gabby. It's a very practical question. So she's asking, what kind of asanas and pranayamas would you recommend for hyperthyroidism? In hyperthyroidism, hyper. Hypo. Sorry, hypo. Hypo thyroidism. Hyper or hypo? <laughs> If it is hypo, hy hypo, hypo, hypo everything yes. goes slow. Everything goes slow, and in hypo body. puts on weight because a uh, thyroxine deficiency is there so people take a small little thyroxine tablet and manages but there are asanas they really help first of all if you already have hypothyroidism then first start taking medicine that i would strongly recommend but learn yoga and slowly that medicine will not be required so practically all the asanas are good for them looking up and bending forward is the beautiful asan which person would it's called a trikonasan uh bhujangasan shalabhasan tanurvakrasan where you are pulling your neck and looking up are very good backward bending so energy level increases because they are low in energy they should never get tired they should their lifestyle should be such that they should work and rest work and rest like for 2 hours you are working for 10 minutes you are doing shavasana again 2 hours you are working for 5 10 minutes you are doing meditation this is how they should go about in life and they should not eat too much food at the same time they should eat little little six times in a day and that's how if they manage walking also is a very very good exercise yogis used to walk and walk throughout india or sit and meditate that was yogic lifestyle and i would always recommend whenever possible you should be moving walking not sitting at one place for long otherwise your back is always getting pressed the energy going upwards is hampered and automatically person is low in energy so uh, all this would help do all these asanas yeah okay and the next question is uh, how we can help with the uh, Uh, how we can help someone who has uh, negativity you know all the time they are negative mm. now i would caution you first of all when somebody has negativity you going close to help him is going to create problem for you you will go into a depressive state you should not allow that negative person to talk you should be talking and you should be showing him varieties of good things you can have some jokes you can have some poem you can do some activities which would bring joy but don't ask anybody how are you don't ask this is a common question we always ask hello how are you this how are you is going to create problem with negative people and they are going to come out with lots and lots of <laughs> um the stories even if it is not that they create stories to tell you to take your you know <laughs> um attention and time and energy so first of all be cautious who can help others person who himself is very much balanced person who is not affected by anybody and everybody a person at the level of buddha or mahavir or christ or nanak or ganeshwar that level people they can help others because they or if you have learned how to maintain balance otherwise you will topple down do you know uh, that in uh, the surveys that 
where the suicidal tendencies are seen quite a lot in psychiatrists themselves. Psychiatrists, doctors, they are listening to negativity and blah, 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 and how much people are suffering, all those laws, and they get affected and they commit suicide. So don't do that. Little dose is fine. Spend 15 minutes with the negative lot and <laughs> Uh, do quite a lot of yoga technology and that's how you manage. That would be lovely. Yeah. Yes, Laliji, you have any other questions? Yeah. There is one here from uh, Dr. Manisha Sarvastha. She's asking that I'm easily able to excuse my child for his lapses, but it is difficult to forgive lapses of other people. How do I maintain a balance and should I aim to achieve a similar response towards both my child and other people in similar lapses or situation? See, you are expecting something which you should not expect because Every child is different. Every situation is different. So try and see that you make your child more uh, capable to take negativity. In a sense, your child should uh, do keep busy in his job. And if somebody teases, he can always say something good to somebody uh, and not react with any situation. Try and see that we stop reacting in life or making any uh, excess uh, expression of negativity and how wrong he is or how that thing is not accepted and so on and so forth. You should say that all varieties of people are there and we, we should follow certain pattern that's our way. So child will be able to do that. I have noticed grown-ups they can't. Two children they fight with each other and after some time they again sit and play together. But parents, they don't do that. They take things negatively and grudgingly. So learn to leave and just bring that little detachment and things would be managed better. Others cannot behave according to your way. Let me tell you, they are going to behave their way. Everybody has their own nature. They are born with their own type of personality. You can't expect them to change. But you should protect yourself. How we protect ourselves with a dog. Dog barks, dog bites also. Yet people keep dog in the house. Why? Because they have seen one good quality in a dog. The dog is faithful. But then when dog is in the house, they study their dog. They get more knowledge about their dog. That what are those things which will irritate dog? They will not do it. Otherwise dog will bite. And you will be in trouble. So, with knowledge, with more understanding, you protect yourself from that dog and yet get the benefit out of dog. So, this is the same formula with any other human beings also. We have to learn to protect ourselves, do something. The Krishna story is there, you know, that somebody wanted to fight with Krishna, Lord Krishna. Come on, you think you are very strong? Come on, fight with me. I know I am the strongest. I can just deal with you like that come come in front krishna said why should i fight with you he started running away from that place he say you are a coward you are running away say, then whatever you call me coward or anybody i don't want to fight with you and he ran away <coughs> so this is krishna's story and his name is run short he left the <laughs> run and ran away because unnecessary creating situation just to prove you are good superior than others makes no sense at all. Let others be superior. What difference does it make? Let others feel they are uh, better than you. Fine. Feel that way. You are what you are. So somewhere we have to learn to yeah, manage life. Okay. Uh, Saji, so I don't know how much time you have. There are lots of questions. So if you allow me, I can ask I don't know one or two questions. It's up to you know, because you have been with us long and then the time is also yeah. Yeah. 15. 15. Yeah. Yeah, please. One or two more. Okay. Can. So this is from Minnie. And her question is Namaste Ma, how can a beginner 
in the field of yoga. Oh, this is a long one. <laughs> yeah. How can you, uh, in the field of yoga? Yeah, this is a long one. Okay. Some, uh, what is that called? Control yeah, the, the diet. <laughs> senses. Just Desire, a moment. Control the desires arising from his senses. Yeah, because yeah, okay, that's the one. Control, mind yeah. sometimes tends fluctuation. It's very, it's very natural, my dear. Uh, desire is a very big thing. You can't control desire. You can create some healthy desires. You see, a person is smoking. He loves smoking, so he drinks. But now, as long as you have something else to love, just leaving smoking doesn't make any sense. Something which would make you feel more happy, much comfortable. You should learn that, and smoking goes away. Taking out. Uh, something instead of that bringing something in is what is required. Everything has to be done with little less. Like a, I know one girl who is there in the institute who the moment chocolate is seen, she just can't control. Now telling her totally stop chocolate doesn't work. It, she would get up at night also at two o'clock and go and eat chocolate. So this is not the way to control. The thing is bring something else. So here she started doing meditation. Then she started doing asanas. She started taking interest in doing asanas more perfectly and so on and so forth. And she started going for trekking, walking, running. When she started taking interest in these things, that desire for chocolate was much less. And one day then she decided that for one full year, I'm not going to eat chocolate and she could do that. Then chocolate and chapati becomes one and the same for her. Then if nothing is available, eat chocolate. But if things are available, eat something healthy. So then mind was healthy. So this is how we go about to reach to desire. There is a very interesting story in mythology that uh, uh, Shiva, Lord Shiva, is an embodiment of desireless thing. Shiva, his wife Parvati, Ganesha, Kartike, they are all no desire, no hunger. So they all are together very happy no problem but lord vishnu who always has desire to help those who are in trouble so if somebody some good is in trouble vishnu will take some or other form he will become krishna he'll become ram he will become narsi avatar he will become this that to go and help people now this going and helping really really helps because that brings such a joy in your personality that you feel worthwhile in life when you are useful to others. Start doing that and slowly reach towards a state when you become desired, when you have less desire. So start your life by helping others, doing whatever you can do for others. But aim should be to reach to desireless states. Suddenly can't become desireless. So don't worry. Do your dharma. Okay. Okay. So the next question, the last question, is yes. from uh, Hansa Baker. So he says that sometimes in some situation we use a highly rigid binary between positive and negative. For a human being at different stages of learning about this earth into which we have been thrust, uh, we have to explore. A child exploring may be positive in her exploring even though it might be negative from the standards of petite bourgeois cultural norms. The upper classes are actually more tolerant, but that is often because they do not spend 24 seven with their kids. Okay, so this is more like a comment, but also you can comment on that, Hansaji, please. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, one thing only just be aware about that the moment negative emotions take charge, you are into more incapacity state. <clears throat> Your body is into a bad state, blood pressure goes up, pulse goes fast, breathing shallow and all those things. So first convert the negativity into positivity. So that is possible only by sitting quietly with your own self, meditating or listening to some sound, this thunder. Listen to some sound which is outside and be still and quiet. This is very much required. Once you are a little balanced, calm, then you can, you'll be able to handle those negative things as well as positive things. 
So don't try to analyze and think when you are in a negative state or you are in an excessive positive state. First, bring balance by doing meditation, <coughs> by doing pranayams, <coughs> by doing nispanda. And then think and you'll be able to do a better job. So that's it. And tolerance will improve, no doubt about it. Uh -huh. Sajid, that's the last question, okay? And that's my question. Okay. So the question for me is, is that uh, I have to find the question suddenly. Okay, here. Here. Yeah. So, how do you fit yoga and meditation in your daily busy schedule? When does your day start and end? Thank you. Okay. At the Yoga Institute, we strongly emphasize that person sitting in a meditation for a long time, we would say, don't do that. You don't have time, nor anything. A simple meditation like Sukhasan, when you are just watching your breath, or you are telling yourself, or sometimes I don't want to think, I just want to be with myself. That sort of a stuff, five minutes, 10 minutes, any time in a day is what is required. First thing in the morning, the moment you wake up, say around four o'clock, five o'clock, whenever the naturally you wake up, you just sit and meditate. Thank God also about it and just sit and be quiet, no thoughts. But then during the day, person should remain in a meditative state of mind so that nothing disturbs you. That's where it comes dharma. You maintain your own balance always, ups and downs, you can handle it as it is and not create problem. So you are in a meditative state of mind. And that, with that state of mind, you are working. When you do that, then you'll be excelling in work and that work itself becomes a meditation. Every work, if you are doing with a purpose in life, keeping purpose in mind and doing the work, then every work is yoga. Every work is a meditation. So that's how we should manage life. Thank you very much, Nancy. Uh, uh, we all take a lot of time because I know that how short of time you are, but yes. that extra time for benefit for all of us. So I really thank you for that. And we hope that uh, we are able to do similar, you know, video yes. chat or meeting with you soon. And yes. we want to wish you yes. all the best, all the best, good health, long life, <laughs> happiness, and success. And you live yes. long, you live the longest of all. <laughs> <laughs> thank your, you, thank you, Dr. Lalit. Um, you, your effort and the effort of the group over there is commendable. I am very glad and I am always available. Whenever you call for me, I'll be there. And definitely, if you come to India, definitely come to Mumbai, to the Yoga Institute, a place which is worth visiting, you must come. And we will definitely um, spread the good message to the world and help people who are not having any direction in life. So I would just say thank you very much. God bless everybody. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina, Sarve Santu Ramaya, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, Ma Kashit Dukkha Bhagbave. Namaskar. Namaskar and thank you to all your team in Mumbai. Thank you very much to all of you. And thank you to all of you who has come because without you, this meeting with the Dr. Hansaji would not have been possible. And I especially like to thank my team, the University of Guelph Yoga and Meditation Collective, amazing group of people. And uh, they are the one who have put this uh, yoga series in front uh, of all of you. So thank you everybody. And have a wonderful day. Yes. God bless. Mm -hmm.